and welcome to the How Not to Screw Up Your Kids podcast, the bucket emptying episodes. So pour yourself a cuppa, find a comfy seat and enjoy the conversation. I'm your host, Dr. Mary Han, psychologist and parenting expert. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about how do we as parents regulate our own emotions? Now, as you know, if you are a follower of my podcast, regularly listening in, you'll know that I've covered some really big bumper episodes recently around how do we help our children manage their big emotions? And one of the recurring themes, one of the things I've talked about quite a lot in those episodes is about how we need to make sure that we're self-regulated so that when we meet our child's big emotions, when those emotions hit and meet ours, that we're self-regulated so that we're better able to manage their emotions. And so that raises a big, really genuine big bucket emptying episode question of how do we actually regulate our own emotions? And I think the first thing that we need to be aware of is that the way that we respond to emotions has become pretty habitual. So we really need to initially do a bit of a reflective piece on how do we typically as adults and as parents manage our emotions? Do we typically fly off the handle? Do we ourselves, would we describe ourselves as short fused? Do we tend to actually withdraw Whatever it is that we tend to do with our own emotions is likely to be a reflection of the way that we were parented and what we then did in terms of managing our own emotions when we were younger. But it doesn't mean that we can't unlearn those patterns. So the first bit really is a reflective piece of typically, how do I respond with my emotions? So that's one bit that we need to do, because unless we're really truthful and honest with ourselves, we can't seek to be in that super self-regulated place for our children most of the time. This is not about being perfect. Perfect parenting doesn't exist, remember, but it's about how can I show up as regulated as I can most of the time. So we have to start with that whole knowledge is power. How do we generally manage and meet our emotions just generally? That's the first piece. And armed with that, we can then do a further reflective piece, which is how do my emotions typically show up with each of my children? I say this with love, but we are likely to respond differently with uh, with different children. So, for example, it may well be with a child who you feel is quite similar to you, or you feel that you've got a bit of a handle on how you manage their big emotions. You feel like you've got the knack, you know what you're doing, and you find it quite relatively straightforward to be able to bring them down when their emotions have got have got really big. You may find that you generally approach that in a really self-regulated way most of the time. But you might find with another child Maybe you don't understand them in the same way. Maybe you've just not yet found that sweet spot that that relationship and the dynamic with that child tends to be unregulated. So their unregulated emotions are met by your unregulated emotions. So we're doing the big piece initially about being able to work out how do I typically respond to emotions? And that will be beyond your family. It will be with friends. It will be in work scenarios and all sorts of situations with your partner and other things. The other one is much more specific to how do those tend to show up with your children and do you have differences with different children? Because it is so important, you know, we're empowering ourselves with our own knowledge. So this isn't a criticism exercise. This isn't a beat yourself up because you you do really well with this child and you don't do really well here or that you have a tendency to get really frustrated It's simply just being able to understand because what you can then do is you can focus your efforts. They can be much more targeted. You know, I'm a big fan of not doing, you know, of taking on only one thing and focusing in on that rather than trying to do loads and loads of different things. So if you're finding, having done that reflective piece, that actually typically you're quite fiery with emotions. You tend to respond really in a large scale way. And there is one particular child that that happens with, then that becomes the place that you're going to do your work because that's where you need to be focused in on. So that's kind of the first bit. The next bit then is about understanding. So it goes back to the whole sort of 
idea behind this particular episode, the bucket emptying, is beginning to get super aware of your bucket. Because, and then this is really a crucial bit, you can see I'm fidgeting, getting ready to talk about it. But it's a really important thing because we're much more likely to approach a fiery, big emotion situation with our children in the best way that we can when we have sort of done that, it's that whole, you know, our oxygen mask, we've fitted our own life jacket. And that's where the bucket is so crucial and so important to understand. What are the things that typically fill your bucket around managing emotions for that child? So this isn't, I want you to look at it, not in just the broad sense of filling your bucket generally with life. Of course, that will play a part, but there will be some very specific things that fill your bucket with the child that you are particularly struggling with to meet in that self-regulated place. So be really, really honest about what it is specifically with that child. Maybe it's a level of frustration because you ask the child multiple times. Maybe it's a frustration because you feel that you spend a disproportionate amount of time trying to manage the emotions of that child. And that begins to build up some of those frustrations. But you need to kind of understand because what happens is when a child experiences a big emotion, we need to know where are we in that bucket. Because if we're quite high up with our bucket filling, that big emotion from that particular child literally serves as that final drop that makes everything spill over. What then happens is we meet their big emotion with our big emotion, which then obviously is not an ideal situation. But more importantly, it reinforces and self-fulfills this notion so that next time we have a scenario with that child, we tend to respond in that particular way again. So it's really understanding that bucket and then being able to work out what do you need to do in order to ensure for most of the time that when your child has those big emotions, that your bucket has sufficient capacity left to manage their big emotions? And it may well be that you have one child who really struggles with their big emotions. That child is a child that you find that you don't often meet their self, their unregulated self with a regulated version of you. And so you might need quite a big amount of capacity left in your bucket, in which case you really need to understand what are the things that drain your bucket sufficiently in order for you to meet them in the best way that you can in that moment. And you need to be really honest with yourself about what that might be. Sometimes it can be about offloading about that particular child, but offloading in a way that is helpful for you, not in a way that is sort of like I was about to say politically correct, but that's socially acceptable. So let, let me be super explicit. Maybe you have a child who, if you are being brutally honest, is so challenging that you actually don't enjoy parenting them. You find it really difficult. You can't see a connection with them. You find them frustrating and you often don't like them. You need to be able to have that kind of conversation with someone, not a sort of slightly socially correct kind of conversation where you're you're skirting around the issue because that doesn't empty your bucket. You need to be able to say, Jack is a real, I'm finding it really difficult to Jack to parent Jack at the moment. I really don't like him. I don't understand where these big emotions come from. I've tried everything. And to be honest with you, I think he's just being particularly problematic. I'm not even entirely convinced that he doesn't know how to manage them. It just feels like he's just doing it on purpose. Whatever it is, it doesn't have to be logical but you do need to offload that. Holding on to that is just not helpful because that will probably leave quite a, quite a chunk in your bucket all of the time because it's unsaid, it's unmet. And you maybe feel guilty that you're an awful parent because you feel that way. So it's really being able to be supremely honest with yourself about the challenges that you face with a particular child that you might be struggling with. And what are the things you need to do to empty that bucket? And you, it may be that actually genuinely you're struggling to manage big emotions and be self-regulating yourself with all of your children and potentially even your partner. And the wider issue is actually to do with other things. Maybe, maybe you're working and doing a job that you're not finding particularly fulfilling. Maybe you need to have a difficult conversation with someone. Maybe you're actually not enjoying aspects of family life. It, we need to look broad but our response to our children will come from what is going on in our own world. And if we ignore that, 
we do so at our peril because we needed to make sure that we're in the right space, that we're able to emotionally regulate ourselves in order to meet our children. So it's really having those honest reflections and then acting from that. And remember more than anything else, we're not looking for perfection. We're looking for us showing up in the best way we possibly can most of the time. So I'm hoping that that's really helpful, given that I've talked a lot about helping children manage their big emotions. So I hope that you find that really helpful. If you do, then as ever, I would be eternally grateful if you could follow, rate and review this podcast so that others can find us and we can spread the love. So until next time.